to welcome. And in this video lecture, we will be discussing tax amnesty, compromise, and abatement. But before all that, of course, we'll have to begin with the discussion of what an assessment is. An assessment, technically speaking, is the determination of the correct amount that is due from one person. From the perspective of taxation, this is the process of determining the correct amount of taxes that a taxpayer will be liable for. It begins with the taxpayer self-assessment of what is due from him without necessary or without the necessity of any demand coming from the government because the obligation to pay taxes is an obligation arising from law. In fact, if you don't pay your taxes on time, you may, you may be liable also for penalties without the need or necessity of demand. On the other hand, once the return has already been filed, generally the BIR will have three years to determine or examine rather the records of the taxpayer in determining whether the correct amount of taxes was already settled. Ito na rin yung other aspect naman ng assessment from the perspective of the BIR. In this assessment, the Commissioner of Internal Revenue and his authorized representatives will examine the books of accounts and documents and records of the taxpayer to determine the correctness of the return okay, or even to make a return in case there is non-compliance as well as to determine the correct amount of tax liability. Basically, the assessment process would flow like this. There will be a letter of authority issued by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue or his authorized representative, which is required to be served within 30 days from the dates of its issuance. Kailangan maibigay na kay taxpayer. Pagkatapos niyan, susundan niya ng audit that will be conducted by revenue officers together with their group supervisor that will be supposedly conducted within 120 days from the receipt of the letter of authority. After which, magi issue nung tinatawag na notice of discrepancy itong si revenue officer para magkaroon ng discussion of discrepancy within 30 days from receipt of notice. Basically, this meeting or discussion will be the time when the revenue officer and the taxpayer will sit no, uh, on and meet and uh, provide. this will provide the taxpayer an informal avenue on where to explain why there are discrepancies noted by the revenue officer or the auditor for that matter. Pagkatapos niyan, kung meron pa rin matitirang findings despite or after the explanation coming from the taxpayer, mag issue na ngayon si BIR ng tinatawag na preliminary assessment notice or PAN. Okay? Upon receipt of which, the taxpayer will have 15 days to file his reply or protest for that matter against the findings noted by the auditor uh, indicated in the assessment notice. Ngayon, kung may portion ng audit findings na matitira pa rin after the reply or the protest to the PAN, mag issue naman si BIR ngayon ng final assessment notice. Okay? And the taxpayer here will have 30 days to file his protest okay, against the findings noted in the final assessment notice. Now, three things can happen once a fan is received by the taxpayer. Number one, kung wala siyang ma-file na protest, in which case the assessment will become final and executory, which means that there is nothing left for the BIR to do but to collect the amount of taxes indicated in the assessment notice. On the other hand, pwede siyang mag-file ng protest, which can either be a protest for reconsideration or a protest for reinvestigation. In a gist, okay, or, or 60 days rather, ang ibibigay dito kay taxpayer to file uh, or to submit the relevant supporting documents kung sakaling reinvestigation ang ifa-file niya. Kung reconsideration ang finile niya, there is no need to submit additional documents because primarily a protest or a motion for reconsideration will just ask the BIR to look again on the existing documents and reconsider their point of view. Hindi katulad pag reinvestigation, uh, may, sub may, may submission ng additional documents because literally there will be a new investigation that will be conducted by the revenue officer based on the new documents submitted by the taxpayer. Kaya nga, the 
uh, approval of the re reinvestigation will suspend the running of the prescriptive period because this will necessitate the BIR to come up with a new assessment notice pagkatapos ng reinvestigation. Now, three things can also happen. Uh, once the BIR is uh, received, no, your reconsideration or reinvestigation, but in both cases, the BIR will only have 180 days to decide. For reconsideration, the counting of the 180 days will be from the filing of the protest, but for reinvestigation, the counting of the 180 days will be from the expiration of the 60-day period to submit documents or kung nag-submit man before that, then from the submission. Now, the BIR can decide in three manners. It can either be igagrant niya, meaning he will consider the contents of the protest, which almost always does not happen. <laughs> On the other hand, the BIR can also deny, in which case it will issue a final decision on disputed assessment or yung tinatawag nating FDPA. And the BIR can also not act on the protest, no? in which case magkakaroon ng inaction. Kung sakaling nagkaroon ng denial, the remedy of the taxpayer will be to file a petition for review before the Court of Tax Appeals within 30 days from receipt of the FDBA. Pero kung hindi nag-decide si BIR or nagkaroon lang ng inaction, meaning nag-expire lang yung 180 days without any uh, positive action from the BIR, then two options will be given to the taxpayer. One is to file a petition for review with the Court of Tax Appeals. Upon expiration of the 180 days, meron siyang 30 days to file the petition for review. Or pwede siyang maghintay. In which case, uh, upon issuance of the FDDA and upon receipt rather of the denial, tsaka lang siya makaka... Tsaka lang siya aakyat sa Court of Tax Appeals which can even be beyond the period of collection already. Kaya dito, in case of denial, 30 days will be granted to avail of the option to file a petition for review with the CTA uh, in division. Okay? And in case of inaction, two actions will be granted or two remedies rather are granted by law. Either go to the CTA within 30 days from the expiration of the 180-day period to decide or wait for the decision of the BIR, in which case, pag na-receive na yung denial, tsaka lang magsistart yung takbo ng 30-day period to go to the Court of Tax Appeals. Now, given the assessment process that the BIR conducts in determining the correct amount of tax liability of a taxpayer, the remedies <clears throat> of a taxpayer in general will be to file a protest against the PAN or the FAN to question the validity of the assessment. Yan pa rin talagang unang-unang remedy no, in relation to assessments. Kasi from there, you can already explain your side or uh, provide an explanation on why the finding should not be an assessment to begin with. Then another remedy granted by law, as we have mentioned a while ago, will be to file a judicial appeal via a petition for review with the Court of Tax Appeals. In case your protest is denied or in case of inaction. But remedies also available to a taxpayer will be to avail of any tax amnesty, which is our topic now, no? tax amnesty, which is granted by Congress. Ibig sabihin, in order for there to be an available amnesty, dapat merong batas. No? There is a law that is uh, enacted by Congress allowing a certain period for taxpayers to come clean and uh, avail of the tax amnesty. Kasi basically, kapag ikaw ay nag-avail ng tax amnesty, voluntarily magbabayad ka ng amnesty tax and you will no longer be assessed for the coverage of the tax amnesty. Or in case of assessment, two other remedies granted to a taxpayer under the tax code will be to file for a compromise. Mag-agree kayo ni BIR na babayaran ko na lang portion lamang ng assessment and tapos na. Or you can apply for an abatement which is basically a cancellation of the liabilities no, in relation to an assessment. So ito ang ating tatlong main topics for this particular video. Availment of a tax amnesty, application for compromise, and an application for abatement which is supposedly covered already in the discussion for tax remedies yun nga lang hindi masyadong na-emphasize or hindi nabibigyan ng much detail that's why we're going to have or take this advantage to discuss them in much more detail so the first part
will be the tax amnesty. Currently, we have the tax amnesty app. No, but in, before that, we will discuss first the general concept of a tax amnesty. So this is an absolute waiver granted by the government to its taxpayers to enable them to voluntarily pay no, for, for the tax liabilities without incurring any penalties in relation thereto. In fact, even liabilities can be waived. Even criminal, civil, or administrative liabilities can also be subject of this waiver. That's why this has been described as a general reprieve for a tax evader to come clean. No, na magbago na yung isip kung dati hindi mo binabayaran ng correct amount of taxes, lagi ka tuloy natatakot na baka ma-assess ka, no? Ang an laki-laki ng penalties na babayaran. Pag nagkaroon ng tax amnesty, pwede ka nang mag bagong buhay, no? Babayaran mo na lang yung amnesty tax and hindi ka nakakabahan sa mga penalties dahil tatanggalin na yan based on the tax amnesty granted by the government. So if we're going to make a distinction between the tax amnesty and an exemption, number one, an amnesty will grant an immunity not only from the civil aspect of an obligation, but also from the criminal aspect thereof. You have to take note that any and all violations of the tax code actually carries with it a criminal liability. Kaya nga hindi nawawala na meron laging compromise penalty. No? In case of non payment of the correct amount of taxes. Kahit nga lang yung may mawalang uh, supporting document or schedule, nagkakaroon pa ng criminal liability. Whereas a tax exemption grants only an immunity from civil liability. On the other hand, they are also different in the sense that a tax amnesty provides for a general pardon that is granted to all qualified taxpayers. Whereas in tax exemption, the taxes are actually there. No? It's just that there are certain taxpayers who will be relieved from the imposition of the tax because of the exemption. And basically speaking, a tax amnesty applies to past tax liability, whereas a tax exemption generally applies prospectively from the time it is granted by law. Kaya nga ang description dito minsan ng ibang authors is that a tax amnesty looks back, whereas a tax exemption looks forward. Now, the Tax Amnesty Act that we have now, effective, recently enacted, was in 2019, which is RA number 11213. The law generally covers supposedly an amnesty for estate tax obligations for estates of decedents who died December 31, 2017 or earlier. And at the same time, it also provides for an amnesty for delinquencies. Ito yung related sa mga assessments na ginagawa ng BIR, even those that are already in court. And a general amnesty for all types of taxes. No? Basically, ang mangyayari sana, magbabayad ka lang ng either 5% of the total assets, or no, 5% of the net equity or 2% of the total asset, whichever is higher. Ang problema lang dito is that the president vetoed the entire chapter or title pertaining to the general amnesty. Kaya as it is, ang mangyayari ngayon, ang coverage lang ng Tax Amnesty Act that we have now will be estate taxes and delinquencies no? or deficiency taxes for that matter. Pero yung iba, like income tax, VAT, no, na wala pang assessment, hindi pa ito covered ng tax amnesty. Kasi ang sabi ng presidente, dapat daw tanggalin muna ang strict uh, requirements ng bank secrecy before we can provide for a general amnesty or reprieve for all taxpayers. Kasi imagine na mangyayari supposedly, pagbayad mo ng amnesty tax, what, what was provided in the law was 2% of uh, total assets or 5% of equity, whichever is higher. Pagbayad mo niyan, hindi ka na pwedeng i-assess ni BIR for any and all types of taxes for previous years. Ganun sana siya, no? na parang clean slate, kumbaga ang start for tax evaders and tax, compl tax compliant people alike na para magkakaroon ka ng peace of mind na ah, nag-avail ako ng amnesty, I can never be made liable for any deficiency taxes covering those periods anymore. But again, this provision or title was vetoed by the President. That's why as it is, what we have now is only an amnesty for estate taxes and an amnesty for delinquencies or deficiency taxes covered by an assessment. So, 
With regards to estate tax amnesty, number one, its applicability will be only on decedents who died on or before December 31, 2017, without any assessment, with or without assessments rather, that have already been issued with regards to estate tax. Na, kaya kung kunwari namatay ng January 1, 2018, which is already covered by the new rules under the train law, hindi na yan qualified for estate tax amnesty. This is actually a, um, what do you call this, a good intent, a good intention on the part of the government. No? Kasi not many people are actually aware that you have to settle estate taxes before you can transfer titles to property, lalo na yung mga minamana, no? na mga lupa, ganyan. Kaya umaabot tuloy na ilang henerasyon na hindi pa rin nababayaran yung estate tax, hindi tuloy malipat-lipat yung title sa lupa or maibenta to a third party. No? Kaya it's a good thing that we have an estate tax amnesty because uh, these people who were not aware before can avail of the amnesty and eventually settle the estate taxes and uh, obtain title to the property which is still in the name of the previous decedent. Now, this, however, will not be applicable to cases that have already become final and executory, meaning kukolektahin na lang kasi ni BIR yan, and to properties involving cases pending in appropriate, appropriate courts. Kasama dyan yung mga cover ng PCGG, like the properties of President uh, Marcos. Those that are covered by the Cases on Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act. Also, those that are covered by the Anti-Money Laundering Act and uh, those that involve tax evasion and criminal offenses under the tax code and also not apply to felonies of frauds, illegal exactions and transactions, including malversation of public funds, which are all considered crimes under the revised penal code. Okay, now the tax base for purposes of determining the amnesty tax due will be the total net estate at the time of death. Kaya ang reckoning period mo pa rin lagi dito sa pag-compute ng correct amount of estate tax amnesty will be the time of death. Kasi yung rules applicable at the time of death ang susundin, the allowable deductions at the time of death, even the valuation will be at the time of death. Kaya kung 1950 na matay, may, may binigay actually, may schedule ang BIR sa kanilang website on the rules no, that apply depending on if its effectivity. Kaya kung kunwari, 1978 na matay, so the tax code of 1977 will be applicable. No? Hindi pa yung rules natin under the tax code of 1997. Even the valuation, kaya pabor din. No? Kasi kung 1950 yan, kahit mahal na yan ngayon, mas mura yan dati. You know, because there's always an upward valuation, lalo na when we talk about land. Now, if an estate tax return was already filed before, but it did not cover the entire estate of the decedent, ang isasama mo na lang sa estate tax amnesty mo will be the net undeclared estate. The net estate previously declared will be presumed to have been reduced already by all the available allowable deductions. Kaya kung sakaling i-declare mo yung undeclared properties, ibig sabihin you can no longer claim any deduction in relation to that anymore except the share of the surviving spouse at the time of death. Kasi nga kung conjugal property yan, ang may-ari ay ang mag-asawa at ang kinukumpitan lang natin ng estate tax ay kung sino yung namatay. Kaya yung par portion lang niya ang nagiging taxable at isa subject natin sa estate tax amnesty. The rate will be 6% similar to estate tax rate now under the train law and the tax due then will be 6% of the net estate at the time of death. Kaya ang valuation mo ng gross estate will be fair market value at the time of death less the allowable deductions at the time of death to arrive at the net estate at the time of death. Then you multiply that with 6%, yun na ang magiging amnesty tax due on the estate. Except that the law imposes a minimum estate tax amnesty of 5,000 pesos. So it will be 6% of the net estate or 5,000 whichever is higher. Now, yan ang ating magiging estate tax amnesty due. The provisions of the tax code will be applicable supplitorily, lalo na kung may rules na hindi covered that are pre uh, hindi covered ng law that is prevailing at the time of death. But primarily, what we apply will be the rules of the law applicable or effective at the time of death of the decedent. Now, 
the composition of the estate will be similar rules that you have found and discussed already in estate taxes before uh, for residents and or citizens worldwide estate ang kanilang composition so regardless of location kasama yan sa kanyang gross estate computation pero for non-resident aliens only estates within the Philippines will be covered okay uh, or will be taxable in the Philippines or will compose the gross estate of the decedent the valuation as we have mentioned will be a fair market value at the time of death Okay, uh, following the rules of valuation applicable to real properties and shares of stock at the time of death also. Kung wala, tsaka natin i-apply yung rules ng tax code of 1997 because it's only applicable suppletorily. Okay, now the deductions uh, will be those that are available at the time of death also. So kung wala pa yung concept ng ibang deduction at that time, hindi mo pwedeng i-claim. Kaya nga si BIR nagbigay nga ng listahan ng mga rules applicable depending on the year of effectivity. Now, so kung kunwari, um, if for example, hypothetically, I'm not actually familiar with all the rules. No? But if for example, in 1950, standard deduction natin 200,000. Kung 1970, ang standard deduction ay naging 500. Tapos 1997, naging 1 million. Kung namatay siya in between 1950 and 1970, din ang susundin natin is 200,000. Kasi that is the amount uh, allowed as a deduction effective at the time of death. Na yan ang ating laging susundin. Hindi ni rest. No? What law was effective at the time of death ang ating magiging basis. Now, <clears throat> who will be the one availing? The ones who are actually liable to file and pay for the estate tax. Who has the responsibility rather to settle the estate tax liability? Which will be the executor or the administrator of the estate or kung walang executor or administrator then the legal heirs, the transferee or beneficiaries. Now, the period of availment will be two years from the effectivity of the implementing rules. The implementing rules for estate tax amnesties are R6-19, which, um, uh, which was published on May 16, 2019, no? which means that it is effective May 31, 2020. 2019. So hanggang May 31, mali, mali ito. Dapat yan, May 31 was the publication. 2019 was the publication, which means ang effectivity niya should have been June 15, 2020, 2019. So two years will be uh, June 15, 2021. So hanggang June 15 na lang this year, ang availment ng estate tax amnesty. Unless, of course, it will be extended by the BIR. Now, where it will be filed, the, the RDO or Revenue District Office that has a jurisdiction over the last residence of the decedent. Kung saan siya nakatira bago siya namatay. That will be the basis on where to file the estate tax amnesty return, which is actually the same venue for the filing of the estate tax return itself. The time of payment will be at the same time the return is filed, generally speaking. No, yun nga lang kasi yan, ang bayad kasi ng estate tax amnesty ay sa banko. Sa so, BIR ka magpa-file ng return, tapos sa banko ka pupunta para magbayad. So, eto lang, there was a rule under the law that all previous transfers will be covered by the availment of the estate tax amnesty. At isang computation na lang gagawin supposedly based on the last decedent covering all accrued taxes under the tax code. Kaya kung kunwari, itong CA namatay ng 1950, pinamana yung lupa, land ang pinag-uusapan natin, pinamana kay B na anak niya na namatay ng 1970, na namatay din no, uh, at pinamana kay C na namatay ng 1990, at namatay itong si C, pinamana kay D, uh, namatay naman si D ng 20. Uh, 15, ayan. Tapos ngayon, na kay E na ang lupa. No? Siya na ngayon ang tagapagmana. So if E will be the one availing of the amnesty tax, supposedly under the Tax Amnesty Act, eto lang ang babayaran ng estate tax amnesty. Isang 6% lang based on the valuation of the property at the time of death of D. No? But this rule under the law was actually vetoed by the president. And based on the veto message as adopted by the BIR in the revenue regulation, you have to pay the estate tax amnesty on every stage of the transfer. Kaya in this example, apat 
na estate tax amnesty return ang ipafile ni E para magkaroon lang ng settlement ng estates ni A, B, C at ni D. No? Para lang malipat sa kanya yung title ng property. Okay? Now, so, binito lang yung supposed rule na covered pati previous transfers that, that there's supposedly no need to file any more separately for each transfer. Now, there will be no admission of liability. Yun na rin kagad yan. When, when you avail of estate tax amnesty, you're not necessarily saying na uh, hindi talaga ako nagbayad. That's why there will be no admission of any civil, criminal, or administrative liability on the part of the estate availing of the estate tax amnesty. Now, ito lang din, the original version of the law provided for conclusive presumption of the correctness of the return that will be filed. So, ang rule supposedly, pag-file mo ng return, lahat ng contents niyan, hindi na pwedeng tignan ni BIR kung tama or mali. Ito, presumed to be correct already and conclusively presumed. But again, that provision was vetoed by the President, which means no, that the valuation and the computation of the estate tax amnesty is still under the discretion of the BIR or subject to their determination of correctness. Kasi nga daw, masyadong technical yung determination ng valuation to be left alone to the taxpayer. Now, the duty of the BIR upon filing of the return will be to issue an acceptance form. An acceptance form uh, basically orders an authorized agent bank to accept the payment of the amnesty tax that will be paid by the estate. After payment, papakita mo kay BIR na nakapagbayad ka na, pakita mo yung official receipt for settling or paying the estate tax amnesty due. Okay, and uh, a certificate of availment of estate tax amnesty will then be issued by the BIR. Supposedly within 15 calendar days from the submission of the payment form, uh, acceptance payment form, and the estate tax amnesty return. Pero kung sakali mang hindi mag-issue ng ganyang certification si BIR, under the law, the availment is still considered effective as long as you have a copy of the uh, OR, Okay, and the uh, acceptance payment form and the estate tax amnesty return. Those three documents will be sufficient proof that you have already availed. Bakit kailangan ng proof of availment? Para kung eventually makalimutan ni BIR na ikaw ay nag-avail at in-audit ka, pwede mong ipakita yan. Na hindi mo na pwedeng i-audit yung estate tax niyan dahil nag-avail ako ng estate tax amnesty. So, one of the benefits, as we have mentioned, for, for any tax amnesty for that matter, will be immunity from all liabilities, including civil, criminal, and administrative cases. Kaya pag ikaw, <clears throat> you have successfully availed already of the uh, estate tax amnesty, then you can no longer be audited for 2017 and previous years concerning estate taxes. Yan ang isang maganda at malaking benefit talaga ng isang tax amnesty. So the documents that may be necessary, yung estate tax amnesty return that we have mentioned earlier, which is BIR form 2118EA, na ipafile mo kay BIR, in the RDO having jurisdiction over the last residence of the decedent. After nyan, yung acceptance payment form na ipapakita mo sa banko para ikaw ay magbabayad ng estate tax amnesty due. No? After that, the supposedly within 15 days, gabigyan ka na ni BIR ng Certificate of Availment of Estate Tax Amnesty. And that is the entire rule no? pertaining to estate tax amnesty. Now, the other portion of uh, the Tax Amnesty Act will pertain to tax amnesty on delinquencies. This covers all national internal revenue taxes collected by the BIR, including VAT and excise tax. But take note, in order to qualify, that is collected by the Bureau of Customs, in order to qualify as a delinquency, meaning nagkaroon ng assessment, no? na audit ka na ni BIR. In fact, in some cases, meron ng kaso that was already filed by the BIR before even the DOJ, kung criminal cases, or nasa korte na, even the Court of Tax Appeals. Hindi ibig sabihin na lahat ng tax liability uh, that is being collected by the BIR will be covered automatically. Dapat delinquency. No? Ibig sabihin may late or unpaid amount na. 
okay, in order to be covered by this tax amnesty. So the tax amnesty on delinquencies provides for four particular situations covered by the Tax Amnesty Act that we will group into Group A, B, C, and D you know, with their corresponding rates of amnesty tax provided under the law. So Group A will cover delinquencies and assessments that are already final and executory. Ibig sabihin, nag-issue na ng final assessment notice si BIR, pero ikaw ay hindi nakapag-file ng protest. No? Which means that the amount is subject for collection already on the part of uh, the BIR. This will also include even delinquent tax accounts which are subject to an application for a compromise pero na-deny yung kanilang claim for, or application for compromise either by the commissioner or by the Re regional evaluation board or the national evaluation board. In which case, the applicable rate will be 40% of the basic tax assessed. So kung 100,000 ang utang mo, 40,000 ang babayaran mo to settle no, or to avail of the tax amnesty on this particular type of delinquency. Let Group B will cover criminal cases that are pending with DOJ or the courts for tax evasion and criminal offenses, in which case the applicable rate will be 60%. Group C... Group C will cover uh, tax cases that have already been decided by the court. No, in fact, you failed to file an appeal, kaya final executive final and executory na even yung judgment. In which case, papayagan ka pa rin mag-avail ng tax amnesty at the rate of 50% of the basic tax assessed. And the last group will be withholding taxes regardless of its nature. So it can be final withholding tax, expanded withholding tax, or it can be withholding tax on compensation. Bakit ito 100% ang nilagay na rate? Kasi yan, ang function mo supposedly as a taxpayer is a withholding agent. Ibig sabihin, pera ito ng gobyerno pero hindi mo na remit sa kanila. No? That's why hindi talaga yan babawasan. Kasi ikaw na yung, ikaw yung ahente supposedly na magbibigay sa kagobyerno ng pera na kolekta mo on their behalf. That's why you have to give it back in full. No? 100%. And in fact, 100% yan lagi kahit pa masama siya sa letter A. So kung may assessment that has become final and executory, but part of the assessment constitute withholding taxes, 100% ang i-apply na rate sa withholding taxes. So kung kunwari may decision na ang court that you are liable for these types of taxes, may kasamang withholding tax, 100% din ang rate na i-apply dun sa portion ng withholding tax. So again, that's 40, 60, 50, and 100%. So a delinquent account pertains to a tax due from a taxpayer arising from the audit of the BIR for which there has already been issued an assessment notice. Okay, final assessment notice ang pinag-uusapan dyan. That have become final and executory either because the, the taxpayer failed to file a protest, whether you call it a reconsideration or reinvestigation, or hindi siya nakapag-appeal with the Court of Tax Appeals upon uh, receipt of the FDDA or the Final Decision on Disputed Assessment denying the protest. Or uh, he failed to file an appeal after um, from receipt of the decision of the commissioner denying an administrative appeal to the final decision on disputed assessment. In short, nag-expire ang iyong period to avail of the general remedies that we have mentioned earlier. That's why the assessment has already become final and executory. Now, the basic tax assess will refer to the tax due that is shown on the assessment notice or the amount indicated in the complaint filed before the DOJ or the prosecutor's office in relation to criminal cases and the basic tax liability in relation to the decision of a court. Kasi lagi yan naka-breakdown na basic tax due, interests, surcharges, compromise penalty, administrative penalties, ang lagi lang natin kukumpita ng amnesty tax will be the uh, basic tax lang. I-disregard natin lahat ng and interest, surcharge, and other penalties. Now, with regards to withholding taxes, as we've mentioned earlier, it's always 100% kahit pa masama siya dun sa group A, group B, or group C. 100% ang i-apply natin sa kanya na amnesty tax rate. 
Okay, so let's provide an illustration so we can better understand that application. So Mr. Meliodas received the final assessment notice from the BIR, which has become final and executory covering the following deficient or delinquent taxes. So merong income tax na 1 million, VAT na 400,000, DST na 200,000, withholding tax on compensation na 100, EWT or expanded withholding tax na 300 for a total deficiency basic tax of 2 million pesos. Uh, aside from that, the assessment notice indicated a surcharge amounting to 500,000, interests amounting to 800, and compromise penalties of 500,000. Okay. So how much will be the amnesty tax to be paid kung sakaling mag-a-avail itong si Meliodas? So the deficiency income tax will be subjected to a 40% rate Kasi ito ay part ng Group A. Ito yung mga assessments that have become final and executory for failure to file a protest. But 40% ang rate. Okay, DST 40%. But you have to take note, again, kahit ito ay Group A, yung withholding taxes laging naka 100%. Kaya yan. 1 million times 40 will be 400, 400 times 40 will be 160, 200 times 40 will be 80,000 pesos. But 100,000 times 100%, then 300 times 100%. Okay, so the proper basis will be basic taxes only. That's why we disregarded entirely the given for surcharge, interest, and penalty or compromise penalty. Okay, and since the assessment has become final and executory, this should be under Group A where 40% will be the applicable rate. Nevertheless, if withholding taxes are indicated even in Group A, 100% ang amnesty tax rate na mag-a-apply. Kasi nga, yan ay pera ng gobyerno na hindi mo binigay sa kanila. Now, what if meron namang nag-a-avail ng amnesty on delinquency pero nag-apply na siya before for compromise settlement? No? Ang mangyayari dito, the amount of the amnesty tax rate will be based on the basic tax less the amount that is already paid. Kasi pag ikaw ay mag-a-avail ng application, pag ikaw ay mag-a-apply for compromise with the BIR, you are required to pay a certain minimum amount. In fact, no applications for compromise will be entertained unless there is a special reason there too. But as a general rule, no application for compromise will be entertained by the BIR if it is not accompanied by an offer to settle the minimum amount. Kaya paano kung ito ay pending pa? No? Or na-deny na, rad. Na-deny na ni BIR or pending pa yung application more for compromise at the time that the tax amnesty became effective. So in which case, sabi nga natin yung basic tax, ibabawas mo dun yung amount na nasettle na. Because of the application for compromise, the net amount will be the basis in determining the amnesty tax due. So, so if it is paid in installments, then the amount of payment shall be based on the net amount as certified by the concerned office. So to give an illustration there, so para lang ma-visualize natin, no? B Company receive a final assessment notice with a 1 million basic tax deficiency. Nag-apply siya for compromise and uh, paid a minimum amount of 400,000 as required by the relevant regulations. So if B Company applied for tax amnesty, how much will it be paying? They will have there the basic tax, 1 million. Ibabawas na yung 40% na binayaran niya, which is 400,000. Then the net amount now will be the basis in computing the amnesty tax due of 240,000 pesos. Okay, mautak din si BIR eh. na gusto niya ibawas mo muna yung nabayaran na bago ka magbayad ng amnesty tax. While technically speaking, you should base the rate on the basic tax per the assessment notice bago ibayad yung na bago ibawas yung nabayad na. Pero ito ang rule kasi na binigay ni BIR at tayo ang mga bawang pawang mortal lamang susundin lang natin yan. No? Kasi wala pang court that declared it to be unconstitutional or void. Now, when and where to file, it will be in the RDO having jurisdiction over the residence or principal place of business of the taxpayer. Doon ka magpa-file ng iyong sworn tax amnesty on delinquencies return. Okay? Accompanied by the certification of delinquency. The payment of the amnesty tax will be made at the same time of the filing of the return. Similar to, similar to the estate tax amnesty, ang gagawin dito ng RDO, pag-receive nila ng application mo, magbibigay sila ng acceptance form that will ad be addressed to the bank to receive payment of the amnesty tax due from the taxpayer. Okay, After nyan, same effect then with regards the 
uh, estate tax amnesty, walang admission of guilt or liability. Just because you availed of the tax amnesty and delinquency, hindi ibig sabihin that you are agreeing with the correctness of the assessment notice made by the BIR. No? In fact, bawal gamitin ang application for amnesty in any other investigation that will be conducted by the BIR. It is actually a criminal liability on the part of the revenue officer. No? And similar to estate tax and amnesty, you will be cleared of any criminal, civil, or administrative liability. So sir, ano mangyayari dun sa mga penalties na kakibat ng assessment, tatanggalin na din. Literal na ang babayaran mo lang dito ay yung amnesty tax due, then settled na. No? Kumbaga, clean slate na once you avail the tax amnesty. Now, the proof of availment, uh, if any notice of levy, attachment, and or warrant of garnishment has already been issued, they will be lifted. Those warrants or notices are actually for collection purposes already. No? Pero kung hindi pa na-execute yan, they will be lifted once you avail of the tax amnesty. Kung baga, ititigil na ni BIR ang pangongolekta. Supposedly, an ATCA or yung authority to cancel assessment will be issued in favor of the taxpayer within 15 days. Sa estate tax amnesty, ang meron tayo is certificate of availment. Dito, authority to cancel assessment. But again, even if the BIR will not issue the same, the availment can be proven by your return, the tax amnesty and delinquencies return, the acceptance payment form, as well as of course the official receipt that you have already settled the amnesty tax due. The form in the return will be submitted to the RDO after complete payment and the completion of the requirements will be deemed full compliance with the provisions of the Tax Amnesty Act. Okay, after full compliance uh, on, when the, with regards to the conditions and the payment of the corresponding tax on delinquency, the amnesty will be granted and it will be final and irrevocable. So kung sakaling mangulek tapos si BIR on the assessment, pwede mong ipakita either yung at kamo or the authority to cancel assessment or the supporting documents that you have na hindi na pwedeng kolektahin because you availed of the amnesty already. So ito yung sinasabi natin kanina that any information that you will indicate in the return okay, and provided by the taxpayer to the BIR will be treated as confidential in nature and it shall not be used in any investigation or prosecution before any judicial, quasi-judicial, and administrative body. And that includes the BIR. So documents that we have mentioned earlier is the Tax Amnesty Return, BIR Form number 2118-DA, Acceptance Payment Form, okay, 0621-DA, and the Certificate of Tax Delinquencies or Tax Liabilities, which is Annex C of RR4-19. The effectivity of the Tax Amnesty of Delinquencies, it applies only supposedly to assessments that have become final and executory December 31, 2017 or earlier. Okay, ganun ang period. And supposedly, the tax amnesty on delinquencies will be effective for one year only from the issuance of RR4-19. But because of the pandemic in 2020, it was extended by the BIR up to December 31, 2020 and again extended by the BIR up to June 30 of 2021. Kaya as it stands, it is still an available remedy for taxpayers to date no? as of recording of this video lecture all right so that's tax amnesty the next the remaining topics that we have is compromise and abatement also in relation to assessments issued by the bir already the concept of compromise under the tax code is actually quite similar to the concept of compromise under the civil code under the civil code uh, the compromise is actually a contract or an agreement between parties by reciprocal concessions, they will avoid litigation or put an end to one that is already commenced. So basically, by compromise, there will be an agreement between the taxpayer and the BIR that they will that the taxpayer will only pay a certain portion of the assessment in order to put an end to the entire collection process. Okay, to the entire collection process. And the grounds under the tax code for a particular taxpayer to avail of this remedy granted by the tax code will be either the assessment is of doubtful validity or that the financial position of the taxpayer demonstrates a clear inability to pay or yung tinatawag nating financial incapacity. Okay, so the requirement is that 
before you apply for a compromise, if the ground that you will be invoking is clear inability to pay, then the taxpayer must provide a written waiver of his right under the secrecy of bank deposits. This is logical because um, in order to determine kung talaga bang merong financial incapacity, uh, incapacity si taxpayer, then it will be better if the BIR has this waiver so that they can verify. No? Kasi nga kung, kung confidential pa rin ang bank deposits, how are you going to be sure that the taxpayer is actually qualified based on that ground that he is invoking? Now, under RR 30-2002, which is the primary implementing rules and uh, implementing revenue regulation for compromise and abatement, for that matter, cases that can be the subject of a compromise will include delinquent accounts. No, ito rin yung mga under-assessment na or ina-assess na ni BIR. Or those that are under administrative protest, meaning may assessment notice na, but you filed either a, a protest for reconsideration or a protest for reinvestigation. Or civil tax cases being disputed before the courts na file na yung collection suit no, ni BIR na ngongolekta na ng deficient taxes. Or even collection cases filed in courts and criminal violations. Except, hindi pwede yung criminal violation kung nasa korte na. na ibig sabihin, ito ang pwede mo lang isubject sa compromise kung nasa DOJ pa lamang or nasa prosecutor's office pa lang yung final na criminal complaint ng BIR. Okay? Now, cases which cannot be compromised or cannot be the subject of a compromise will involve withholding tax cases. Kasi nga, again, we, only, we always have a special rule for withholding taxes because this is the money of the government and you functioning as an agent, uh, as a taxpayer withholding agent, you should have been able to remit this. Except no, if the taxpayer will be able to invoke a provision of law that will cast doubt as to the taxpayer's obligation to withhold. Yung hindi sigurado kung talaga ba siya ay withholding agent or hindi. Criminal tax fraud cases cannot also be the subject of a compromise, particularly if they have already been confirmed by the Commissioner of Internal Revenue or his duly authorized representative as a criminal tax fraud case. Criminal violations that are already filed in court Kasi yung kanina, criminal violations generally pwede except if they are already filed in court. Hindi na pwedeng isubject to compromise. And delinquent accounts where it is already subjected to a schedule of installment payments. While delinquent accounts can generally can be the subject of a compromise, hindi pwede yan kung may agreement na between the taxpayer and the BIR on the installment payments thereof. Okay, and... Cases where the final reports of reinvestigation or reconsideration has been resulting to a reduction of the original assessment already and the taxpayer already agrees to the reduced amount of taxes based on the revised assessment notice. Kasi ito may agreement na. No? That's why you cannot further have it reduced. Ni-reduce na, ipapareduce mo pa ulit based on a compromise. And cases that have become final and executory after a final judgment of the court where compromise is requested on the ground of doubtful validity of the assessment. Kasi dito, wala nang duda. No? Dahil na-litigate na yung validity ng assessment, that's why you can no longer claim that it is of doubtful validity. Kasi nga, final and executory na ang judgment ng korte. And estate tax cases, where compromise is requested on the grounds of financial incapacity. Because in the first place, the taxpayer in estate tax will be the estate itself. No? And supposedly, the estate tax liability will come from the estate or the payment of the estate tax will also come from the estate. Kung wala namang laman talaga ang estate, paano mo masasabi na magkakaroon ng estate tax due? Diba? Kaya logical lang na there can be no financial incapacity of the estate if there is an estate tax due to begin with. Now, with regards to doubtful validity of assessment under RR 30-02, the compromise of a delinquent account or disputed assessment under the revenue regulations on the ground of reasonable doubt as to the validity of the assessment will be shown or uh, yung mga instances no, where you can invoke this ground as a ground for application for compromise will be number one if the assessment is cl classified as a jeopardy assessment. A jeopardy assessment under the regulations is an assessment without the benefit of a full or partial audit. 
nagmadali si VIR kasi magpe-prescribe na ang kanilang right to assess. That's why they have to issue an assessment right there and then. No? Because the taxpayer failed to provide the necessary documents uh, that are being asked of him during the audit or the investigation. Kaya dahil mauubos ng oras ni VIR, mag i na lang siya ng assessment. Yung assessment na yan ang tinatawag nating jeopardy assessment. Kasama din dito will be arbitrary assessments as we would call it. Okay? If the assessment itself is based only on presumptions and there is reason to believe that it is lacking supposedly in legal and or factual basis. And if a taxpayer failed to file an administrative protest on account of the alleged failure to receive the notice of assessment. Yan kasi yung isang common ground that is being invoked no? kapag nasa korte na yung assessment na hindi naman na-receive ni taxpayer. So paano siya magpo-protest or paano siya magbibigay ng uh, kanyang opinion on the validity of the assessment in the first place kung hindi niya naman natanggap. And there is reason to believe that the assessment is lacking in legal and or factual basis. Other grounds or other instances where this ground can be invoked will include if the taxpayer failed to provide, file also a request for the investigation or reconsideration within 30 days from receipt of the fund, and there is reason to believe that the assessment itself is lacking in legal and or factual basis, and the taxpayer failed to elevate okay, to the CPA uh, the adverse decision of the commissioner or kahit pag nag-expire na supposedly si 180-day period, okay, um, and there again, the assessment is lacking in legal and or factual basis. Or if the assessment were issued on or after January 1, 1998, kasi ito yung moment na nag-iba ang requirements ng assessment. Dati kasi, legal basis lang ang required na ilagay, but under the Tax Code of 1997, which became effective January 1, 1998, na pati ang factual basis. Kaya kung nagkaroon ng non-compliance with the prescribed formality, that can also be a ground to file for a compromise based on doubtful validity of the assessment. Or if the assessment was made but based on best evidence obtainable rule. Under this rule, the Commissioner of Internal Revenue is allowed to make an assessment on whatever evidence that they can obtain on the premise that the taxpayer is not able, unable, or unwilling to provide the documents that are necessary to conduct a full audit or investigation. Okay, and there is reason to believe that the same is, can be disputed by sufficient and competent evidence. And the assessment was issued within the prescribed prescriptive period for assessment. Okay, and the taxpayer issued a waiver of the statute of limitations to extend the, the prescriptive period of the BIR to assess the correct amount of taxes. Pero dito, ang may pagdududa tayo is on the validity or authenticity of the waiver. Kasi effectively, if the waiver is considered invalid, it will not legally extend the prescriptive period. In which case, any assessment that will be issued beyond the original prescriptive period will be void and illegal already. No? Kasi nga prescribed na ang right to assess on the part of the BIR. So yan ang ating mga grounds or instances rather where you can invoke doubtful validity of the assessment as a ground to file for compromise. Ngayon, ito nagkaroon lang ng issue before uh, with regards invoking the best evidence obtainable rule as a ground to file for compromise based on uh, doubtful validity. So under the tax code, the commissioner may allow a compromise of internal revenue taxes when there is doubtful validity. Okay, A reasonable doubt as to the validity of the assessment or the claim of the taxpayer against the taxpayer exists when it is shown that the delinquent account or disputed assessment is one arising from a jeopardy assessment. Technically speaking, from the grounds that we have mentioned, may tatlong klase ng assessments na pwedeng maging basis no, for you to file a compromise. Number one is when it is a jeopardy assessment. One, or second rather, when it is an arbitrary assessment, yung based lang on presumptions. And third, if it is based on the best evidence obtainable rule, which can be disputed by competent and relevant evidence. No? Pero kinarify dito ni BIR under RMC 34-14 that an assessment based on the best evidence obtainable rule is not automatically a ground no, to avail of a compromise. Kailangan pang i-check dito yung surrounding circumstances that led to the issuance of the assessment 
and of course the basis no, that were used by the BIR in issuing the assessment itself. Unlike the jeopardy assessment and arbitrary assessment uh, that would fall within the categories you've mentioned earlier, pwede na sila kagad na i-invoke as ground. Pero pag best evidence obtainable, magkakaroon pa ng evaluation on the basis and the surrounding circumstances that led to its issuance. Kung baga, if we're going to make a distinction between a jeopardy and a best of evidence obtainable assessment, na ang, ang jeopardy assessment automatically pwede nang maging ground kapag based on best evidence obtainable rule, kailangan pang i-check muna ni BIR. Hindi automatically nagiging ground for uh, compromise based on doubtful assessment. Now, on the other hand, <coughs> instances when the taxpayer may be considered as having clear inability to pay the amount of tax assessment or financial incapacity under RR 30-02 will be if, number one, the corporation has already ceased operation or is already considered dissolved. Now, provided that the tax liabilities with regards to subscription receivable or assets distributed or distributable to the stockholders representing their return of capital, not just return on profit, but return on capital, at the time the operation ceased or at the time of dissolution shall not be considered for purposes of compromise. No? Kasi ibig sabihin may pera. No? May pera ang corporation kung may pinamigay sila to the stockholders after it has already been dissolved. And technically speaking, may priority or preference ang taxes that are being collected by the government against any other creditor. Now, second is when the taxpayer as reflected in his balance sheet is already suffering from surplus or earnings deficit okay? or uh, negative ang kanyang retained earnings as he would call it normally, no? resulting to impairment in the original capital by at least 50% provided that the amounts payable again or due to the stockholders other than business-related transactions. So ito yung supposedly loans no? that is not part of the equity but is part of liability. Okay, are by fiction of law considered part of capital. Although for accounting purposes, we technically consider this as liabilities. Okay, but for purposes of determining financial incapacity, they will be considered part of capital only by fiction of law. Okay, or if the taxpayer is suffering from a net worth deficit. To make it simple, a net worth deficit is whenever your liabilities are already higher than your assets or you have a net equity or a negative equity, rather, no? uh, based on your uh, financial statements. Yun nga lang dito, nagbigay pa si BIR na sarili niyang computation uh, as to what constitutes liabilities kasi hindi mo isasama yung liabilities that are payable to stockholders or owners okay? except business-related transactions. Kasi nga, sabi natin, for purposes of compromise, by legal fiction, liabilities to stockholders are treated as part of equity. And when we talk about assets, when we compare it with total liabilities, this will be net of prepaid expenses, deferred charges, pre-operating expenses, as well as appraisal increases in fixed assets. Now, para, again, as a parameter in determining financial incapacity of a taxpayer. Or when the taxpayer is only a compensation income earner, ibig sabihin wala siyang other sources of income, wala siyang business, wala siyang practice of profession, and the entire family's gross monthly compensation income does not exceed the levels of compensation indicated in RR 30-02 as well. And the taxpayer appears to have no leviable properties. Ibig sabihin, walang, kung kahit i-assess mo siya no, at um, manalo ka sa korte, wala ka rin makokolekta kasi wala naman siyang assets na pwedeng ibenta for uh, in a public auction to settle the S, the deficiency tax liability. Or when the taxpayer has been declared bankrupt no, or insolvent by any agency of the government. Okay? In fact, any court. Okay? Uh, technically, what governs now, the law that governs that now will be the Financial Rehabilitation and Insolvency Act. Okay? So if they have been declared bankrupt or, or insolvent, they will qualify as financially incapacitated taxpayers already. Now, when can a compromise be applied for? As you mentioned earlier, with regards to civil liabilities, it can be at any stage of the assessment process or litigation. Kahit na file na sa korte, pwede pa rin mag-compromise ng tax liability. But of course, if it is already filed in court, you have to seek 
uh, leave of court. When we talk about leave of court here, ang ibig sabihin lang yan is approval. No? In which case, ang magiging decision ng korte dito yung tinatawag nating compromise judgment, which is a judgment based on a compromise agreed upon by both parties. But when we talk about a criminal liability, pwede lang mag-avail ng compromise prior to filing in court. Kasi sabi natin kanina, once a criminal case is already filed in court, it can no longer be the subject of a compromise. So what will now be the minimum amounts that will be required to be paid under the tax code if the basis is doubtful validity of the assessment, 40% of the basic tax will be the uh, minimum amount required as a compromise amount. No? But if it is a financial incapacity, 10% of the basic tax will be the basis in determining the amount of compromise that the BIR may agree with. Okay, If the compromise amount that is being um, you call is offered by the taxpayer is lower than the minimum required by law, then he must file first a written request citing the factual and legal basis and seek the approval of the National Evaluation Board, which is composed of the Commissioner of Internal Revenue and the four deputy commissioners. So hindi lang si commissioner ang magde-decide kung iaallow ka niya, kung iaallow ka rather, na magbayad ng less than the minimum prescribed by law. Bo lahat ng deputy commissioners kasama. But however, in RR 30-02, the minimum amounts that are required to be paid uh, actually are different. No? Mas marami yung amounts na, or percentages na tatandaan dito. If it is financial incapacity, if the taxpayer earns compensation income only and the income ranges from 10,500 uh, if single and 21,000 if married, 10%. Hindi pa nila nagkaroon, hindi pa nagkaroon ng update with regards this. No? Kasi in fact, uh, there is no longer a distinction of a taxpayer that is single, head of the family, or married. Pero dahil luma ito, nagkaroon pa ng ganyang distinction. Taxpayer has no other source of income whatsoever, 10% din. Has zero negative net worth, 10%. With regards to dissolved corporations, 20% ang minimum amount required. If it is non-operating for three years or more, 10%. Non-operating for less than three years, 20%. For declared insolvent or bankrupt taxpayers, 20% will be the minimum compromise. And kung yung ground mo will be yung earnings deficit resulting in impairment of 50% of the capital, then 40% will be the required minimum uh, to be paid for a compromise. Now, the approval of the National Evaluation Board, ah, pag doubtful validity, laging 40%. Kaya hindi na natin pinag-usapan. Lagi siyang 40% ang minimum. So, approval of the National Evaluation Board, composed uh, yeah, of the commissioner and the four deputy commissioners will be required, not just the approval of the commissioner, if the basic tax exceeds 1 million pesos or when the settlement offered din nga is less than the prescribed minimum rates. And as we have mentioned earlier, kailangan pang magbigay ng written um, written request no, to, to compromise for less than the minimum prescribed by law. Then, as you have mentioned also before, the compromise offer shall be paid by the taxpayer upon filing of the application kasi hindi gagalawin yung application for compromise hanggat hindi mo binabayaran yung re required amount or minimum amount required by law or the offered amount if it is approved by the National Evaluation Board. All right. And the last part of our discussion will be on abatement. So for abatement, as compared to compromise, where a certain minimum amount of the or a portion of the assessment is being required to be paid, abatement is technically a cancellation uh, of the amounts due. So it is a cancellation or withdrawal of the assessment made by the BIR or a portion thereof or an abatement covering only penalties. But take note, that under RMO or Revenue Memorandum Order 20-07, the BIR only allows or processes applications for abatement that cover surcharges, interest, and compromise penalties, which means that you cannot apply for abatement concerning basic taxes na hindi siya makocover or hindi ka pwedeng magpa-cancel or withdraw in regards to basic tax assessments. Ang pwede lang will be on penalties. Okay, so the grounds for abatement will be any portion of the tax is considered unjustly or excessively assessed or with regards to cost-benefit analysis, 
the administration or collection costs involved will not justify collection of the amount due. So magkaiba. Sa compromise, ang ating grounds will be doubtful validity and financial incapacity for abatement, unjust and excessive assessment of tax and with regards to the collection cost being higher than the amount that you will be collecting or the cost-benefit analysis. <clears throat> So, unjust or excessive assessment of penalties and or interest under RR 30-02 will include when the filing of the return or payment is made at the wrong venue. Okay? Kasi dito, kung kunwari ikaw ay pang RDO 38, hindi ka pwedeng mag-file ng return mo sa RDO 39, RDO 40, no? hindi pwedeng sa ibang revenue district. Kung ikaw ay covered ng online filing of return, hindi ka pwedeng mag-manual filing. That will be considered wrong venue. In which case, a 25% surcharge can already be imposed on you aside from other penalties that the BIR may impose. So that can be a ground. Kung nagkamali ka lang naman ng lugar kung saan ka nag-file, you can apply for abatement of the surcharge. If the taxpayer's mistake of his tax is due to an erroneous written official advice of a revenue officer, dalawang bagay no, with regards to this one. Number one, it is not unusual for a taxpayer to call the BIR to clarify some uh, compliance requirements. No? Yun nga lang, kahit pag pumunta ka kay BIR, merong officer of the day na tinatawag na pwede mong pagtanungan at ibigyan kanya ng advice. Kaso minsan mali no? and you will rely on it. But in order to have that as a ground to abate the penalties because of your reliance on what was the advice given to you, kailangan written official advice ang meron ka. No? Kaya, which is almost impossible to invoke kasi wala namang binibigay na written official advice ang revenue officer. Lagi lang tatawag or sasabihan ka lang na ah, ganito ang gagawin mo. So kahit nag-rely ka man in good faith, you cannot uh, invoke that as a ground to abate your penalties kung wala namang written official advice. Or if a taxpayer fails to file the return and pay the tax on time, Due to substantial losses from prolonged labor disputes, which is normally a six-month period, force majeure, yung mga acts of God, no, like a storm, earthquake, and legitimate business reverses, such as in the following instances. Yung nga, yung labor strike of six months na nagkaroon ka ng temporary shutdown, kaya yung tinatawag na prolonged labor disputes, a public turmoil, natural calamity such as lightning, earthquake, storm, flood, and the like, which constitutes the force majeure, Armed conflicts such as war or insurgency, substantial losses due to fire, robbery, theft, or embezzlement, which actually qualifies for legitimate business reverses. Kasi yung tatlong yan, yung labor disputes, force majeure, and legitimate business reverses are also the three grounds for the security secretary of finance to suspend the imposition of the minimum corporate income tax. I'm the, I don't know if you remember it from your income tax discussion before. Also, if there's continuous heavy losses incurred by the taxpayer for at least two years, or for the last two years rather, or there are liquidity problems for the last three years, or such other instances that the commissioner may deem analogous, analogous to the what was mentioned in A to G. The abatement, however, with regards A to H that we have mentioned, will cover only surcharge and compromise penalty. But you cannot apply for the abatement of the interest. Kasi ang premise pa rin ng lahat ng yan is that there is delay in the filing of the tax return and payment of the tax. Kaya tama lang ang imposition ng interest from the point of view of the BIR. And when the assessment is brought about or the result of the taxpayer's non-compliance because the law is subject to a different interpretation, which is not unusual, particularly because our tax rules are highly evolving, no? na nag-iba-iba. In fact, Hanggang ngayon, ang dami pa mga gray areas. So kung nagkaroon lang ng difficult interpretation of the law, you can invoke that also to abate no, the penalties in relation to that um, non-compliance. When a taxpayer fails to file the return and pay the correct tax on time due to circumstances beyond his control, provided again that the abatement will be limited to surcharge and compromise penalty and will not cover interests. Late payment of the tax under meritorious circumstances such as use of the wrong form but correct amount of tax was already remitted kasi yan nasa subject pa rin to surcharge. No, kahit pa pareho yung amount pero maling return ang ginamit mo. 
filing an amended return under meritorious circumstances provided that the abatement will cover only the penalties and not the interest. Ang premise dito is that the amended return provided for a higher tax liability than the amount that you have already paid before. Surcharges that are erroneously imposed, lalo na pag automatic kasing nai-impose ng uh, system. No? If you use a EBIR forms or the EFPS, they will automatically compute that basta late na no, uh, ang filing ng return mo. Late filing of the return due to an unresolved issue on classification or valuation of real property such as for capital gains tax purposes and the like. No? Pwede siguro dyan kahit estate tax okay, uh, and donors tax. Pwede rin mag-cover with regards to valuation of property. Offsetting of taxes of the same kind so nagkaroon ka ng overpayment sa isang period, tapos imbis na i-amend mo yung return mo for that period, yung overpayment in-apply mo na lang to the following period. That can be a ground also for uh, abatement of the relevant penalties. And automatic of setting of overpayment of one kind of withholding tax against another underpayment of another kind. So kung kunwari overpaid ka ng expanded withholding tax, imbis na i-amend mo yung expanded withholding tax return mo, ginawa mo na lang siyang tambawas no, doon sa amount ng withholding tax and compensation that you are required to remit. Late remittance of the withholding tax and compensation with regards expatriates for services rendered in the Philippines pending the issuance of the SEC of the license with regards to the Philippine branch or subsidiary, provided that the abatement will only cover surcharges and compromise penalty. Pero ito, it's a very hard situation to be in, no? Because you are already paying the compensation of the expatriates, which you are required to subject to withholding tax and compensation, pero wala kang registration. Yan ang premise. Eh. Kaya paano may i-remit kay BIR? And in the first place, why are you withholding? No? Kaya dapat yan, on a, on a practice perspective, ang ginawa ng employer dyan, binayaran niya muna as a consultant para magpa-file si expatriate ang sarili niyang return. No? You'll just hire somebody to do that. Now, wrong use of the tax credit certificate kasi pag ikaw ay nag-apply for refund, they won't normally give you cash. That's why they will give you a tax credit certificate in which case, kailangan mo pang i-convert into a tax debit memo and yung tax debit memo number ang gagamitin mo to file the return para maging tax credit siya mag-appear. No? Mababawasan yung tax liability. Pero kung diretso ka ng tax credit certificates na hindi ba na-convert to a tax debit memo no, invalid supposedly ang application or ang paggamit ng iyong tax credit. And other, in, other instances where the commissioner may deem analogous to the enumeration above. Okay? Ganon din with regards to the last uh, ground in order to abate penalties and or interest. Now, with regards to the other ground, to file for an abatement where the administration collection costs are more than the amount uh, sought to be collected no, or does not justify, uh, the amounts to be collected does not justify the administration and collection costs. The, the BIR under RR30-02 provides for the following circumstances. Okay? So when the administrative and collection cost, including the costs of litigation, which is actually the more costly part, no, are much more than the amount that may be collected from the taxpayer, the assessment may be reduced through abatement or entirely cancelled. But again, under RR, our RMO 20-07, hindi sila nagpa-process ng abatement ng basic taxes. No? Kaya supposedly ito ang original, pero hindi, hindi naman ginagalaw ng BIR kapag nag-apply ka. So the instances that may fall under this category will include penalties on assessments confirmed by the lower courts but appealed by the taxpayer to a higher court kasi mas malaki ang gastusan pagdating sa higher court, and penalties of withholding tax assessments under meritorious circumstances with regards to delayed installment payment and assessment reduced after the investigation but the taxpayer is still contesting the amount no? kahit nabawasan na. And lastly, other instances which the commissioner may deem uh, analogous to the 1 to 4 that we have mentioned. With regards to items 1 to 4, the abatement of the surcharge and compromise penalty shall be allowed only upon written application by the taxpayer signifying his willingness to pay the basic tax in interest or the basic tax only, whichever is applicable under the prevailing circumstance. Kasi lalo na dun sa number, um, number 1, 
no uh, ang mga hari diyan kailangan papatunayan pa ni taxpayer na i-withdraw niya na yung appeal niya no to the higher court para hindi na dumagdag pa sa mga gastusin both ng taxpayer at ng BIR now the power of the commissioner of internal revenue to abate or compromise penalties and taxes can be delegated to what we call a regional evaluation board whenever the amount that is being sought to be collected is only 500,000 pesos or with regards minor criminal violations. In which case, hindi na kailangan si commissioner pa no, ang mag-process ng iyong application for compromise or abatement. The Regional Evaluation Board is composed of the regional director who will act as the, as the chairman and the assist, assistant regional director, the heads of the legal uh, division, the head of the assessment and collection division, and the revenue district officer having jurisdiction over the taxpayer. And that concludes our discussion with regards to tax amnesty, uh, compromise, and abatement, all of which are remedies of the taxpayer to reduce his tax liability with the BIR. Thank you very much for watching.